So here's a little preview of what we are going to be making here today. And then you can find that full beat at the end of the video. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Scalar. So with this beat, I was making it at work. And so I'm making this on the macbook air speakers so just as a heads up so and then i'm gonna load scaler i'm gonna load up mg the futures core book three and i'm gonna go through a couple of presets and settle on i said i would choose this guy um, i'm gonna play around with the root note just a little bit but i end up just going back straight to the uh, original I'm just gonna lay my chords out and then bring that first chord back and then use those other notes. I'm gonna turn my human eyes on bow velocity and timing. I'm not so strummed it. Then I'm gonna load up Analog Lab and try to look for a piano. I'll find something good over here. I'm gonna kind of play around with the chords a little bit. I don't really do too much drastic. Something very simple. And then I'm gonna load a reverb onto my sin. So I'm using a Studio One template where I have all my instruments on a bus and my drums on a bus, and then a bunch of sins. And so this is what I'm sending is to my reverb sin. And I have the reverb on 100% wetness, and I'm just slowly adding the reverb and sending it more to the sin. I'm gonna just add an EQ, kind of take out some of that low end. Just gonna make it easier for my drums to kind of punch through in that bass once I add it. <clears throat> Nothing too complex so far. So I'm going to turn my uh, strum off on the scaler and then I'm going to just load that into a new expand patch. I'm going to just go through some different pads and load it on there. I think I picked bells actually, excuse me. I tried to add it like an arp on it to see the end, but uh, it wasn't it. So I just kept it the way it was. Just straight chords. And I'm gonna add a RC20 and the depth for Blux just to bring it out quite a bit more. And then another EQ just to bring out that low end, bring out the art, take out the low end. And then I got a little bass, so I'm gonna uh, start adding some drums. I'm gonna go into the couch drum kit and I'm gonna add the gospel clap and just put it on the get the rebeat. Turn it down a little bit. And we're gonna keep on adding with some drums. I'm gonna go into the Wonder Girl um splice kit. Uh my did original idea for this was kind of like a trap soul, so I wanted to use some mad modern hi-hats. So I load this up and just chop it up. Turn those down and then I'm gonna add a uh, pan man on there. Just kind of bring the high outs a little out a little bit more, add, give them more life. I just use the default setting because it's pretty much exactly what I needed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a widener 
to uh, this guy. It's a free plugin from Polyverse. Just to fill that out some more, fill some space. And then just some some hi hat rolls because I can't leave that as it is. So that'd be way too boring. From the, from the different um, quantized functions and using my studio one split to grid which I have set to zero just for easy chops changing the snare and the clap pattern that I had set I do the clap I tried to do the snare on the uh, two and the four but I switched that to the clap because it sounded way better and then like I said I just switched those around Changing out the snare for a little bit different, but still in that Wonder Girl pack. drums a little bit more with some count uh, percussion loops um, I think the first one that I go ahead and grab after looking for a little bit is a uh, lo-fi clap loop um, I mainly use it for like the texture because if you listen to it when I add it it just has like these statics and then it's kind of subtle clap But the counts kits have definitely been my go-to for pretty much all my drums. Pretty much use get on every beat. And I just gotta adjust the timing a little bit. I jacked it up on that first one. Let's go back and fix those up. Just by using the uh option button and clicking. And then next I'm gonna add um, this hi-hat loop that just kind of fills out the hats a little bit more. It gives the, the beat just a little bit more life. On that one as well duplicate it and then I'm gonna add a pancake on this one and then I'm gonna do the um, fast slow um, settings on the presets just to alternate it from the other one We're gonna go back into the counts kick. I think it's count pack two. I'm gonna use the counts kick. And we're just gonna lay out a little kick pattern. Um, 
the mob is pretty dead on any day that's not a weekend so i just take my laptop and i just try to make as much beats or loops as i can and then so i got my kick pattern i'm just gonna copy that first one over and then add a couple little variations just to switch it up a little bit i didn't do too much crazy with the drums i'm just kind of just just try to bust beats out as fast as possible on my work because trying to pay attention to the detail is how when customers walk in and I don't notice them. So I gotta keep my head on the swivel, which kind of keeps me just moving fast so I don't spend too much time on one particular part. And then I'm gonna double the kick, I'm gonna um, go into the Wonder Girl kick a kick from there just kind of give it a little more thickness and once again that's just our kit from splice I'm sure you can find it anywhere at this point now and I'm just gonna copy that first one straight down and then adjust the levels a little bit. But I just think that gave it a, a little bit more of a fuller sound for that guy. And then we're gonna finish out our drums with uh, one more perk. Um, I started searching through the Wonder Girl perk but then I ended up going back to the count and picking a perk from there from this one shot and laying out a little tom I think it was a tom pattern that's just kind of neatly tucked in the background just to add a little bit more speed probably took me around 30 to 40 minutes to make in total um, I started making it and then I had like one customer just come in so I just kind of just had to stop and then um, picked it back up and then I kind of took a 10 closed the gate and finished most of it out and then went back on the floor and did everything I'm gonna add another layer of expand. I'm just gonna duplicate that first one and I'm gonna go into pads, I believe. Yeah, I'm gonna go to soft pads and then add, just find one over here, holy flute pad. I'm gonna bring it up an octave though. And it sounds a little aggressive, so I'm gonna go Add an EQ and I'm gonna turn off that RC20 that was on the other one. And then um, I thought I might need like some like random element that happens just like every so often so I opened I copied the strum notes from the piano over to a strum session um, the free version that I got from plugin boutique from buying whatever probably about like a dollar plug-in to get it and so I try to draw this little guitar pattern that kind of just pops in every once in a while um, in hindsight I should have added like 
couple more notes, you'll kind of see at the end, but it works for what it does. I probably should have added like two more notes like towards the like the fourth part of the bar, but whatever. I'm gonna add a RC20 on there as well. I'm gonna use my Mo guitar um, preset. That's just a variation of one of their guitar presets. I'm pretty sure. And I just added a couple things. And then I'm gonna throw a, a little bit more reverb on there as well. So that's my reverb sin. Nothing too special, but just kind of brings it up a little bit more every two bars or so. I think I have it. And then I'm gonna go in arcade. Um, going in arcade, I, my idea was just to get a voice sample, so I kind of just go through the arcade and I set my uh, key and then I just search through these. I end up going through a couple different random packs, but um, I think I ended up noticing that it was like they said there was the week of hooked. And hook this probably my your most used arcade um, library, which is a bunch of voice samples, and that's typically what I use arcade for. So that's what I did. Um, for whatever reason, this typically doesn't jack my CPU up, but when making this beat, it was like go and yeah yeah. And I'm on my on the wall mall Wi-Fi, so like trying to load the patches and download them was a problem itself. I don't think it translates that well in the video, but it was, it was annoying as hell to do it. So I ended up finding a patch and then I kind of played with the different octaves. I ended up going with the original octave. It sounded the best. I tried up an octave, down an octave. But the original just sounded the best. And I just ended up playing two notes from that. Um, yeah, way more. I probably could add in more variation there. But like I said, I'm at work. I'm just gonna get through a little quick little work, quick little cook up. I um, can always go back. I'm probably just gonna post this beat for free to be honest and not really do any more changes. It's dumb easy. Best 20 bucks a month I spend. And then I'm gonna send 
that to the reverb end as well. Um, I'm seeing that pretty strong. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit though. And then I'm gonna actually end up bouncing that because, like I said, my CPU is going yay yay. So uh, I'm just gonna save a little bit of uh, CPU on that. It seemed to be mainly just that that was going crazy. And then I end up sending that bounced audio back to the reverb channel and turning it up a little bit more. I like cut where it ended up with the reverb on that one. I end up on the wrong channel. Um, I tried to add like uh, art kind of over it just to give it a little bit more, but I <laughs> I tried a flute from the BBC Orchestra. I don't know why I did a flute because I already had hella high patches. I had a flute in a pad, so I did not end up going with that. I end up um, changing the BBC Orchestra to an expand patch, and I think I picked um, another flute patch. Um, it's so I just layer it with the uh, the high flute pad patch. So just more layers. I was trying to add something that gave it a little bit different feel, but it did not sound the way I wanted, and I was being kind of lazy with it, just trying to use a scaler to make a harp. Um, I didn't really feel like writing a whole new melody, or melody to begin with. everything all together this is kind of what it sounds like and then one more EQ on that last patch of expand that I just added that pad We need a bass, so I load up a uh, a massive patch. I'm gonna try to use Ultra Analog at first, but I think I just end up going massive with the patch B Load 2 because I use that a lot. I might end up just using the chords from or the bottom notes of the chords and then kind of playing around with a couple of different of the octaves and trying to bring down an octave. Um, this is probably the hardest part about making a beat at work. Um, I can't really use headphones, so when I do, it's like shitty Apple headphones. So I'm not using like my beats or anything, so I can't really hear where the bass is at. So um, the original mix of this, I played it in my car, and I was like, whoa, that bass is doing the most. So I went back after this video, and I turned the bass down a bit. But yeah, like I said, I just go into massive, and I the massive one, and I just use B low, and then I go um, and at our base, and I use typically use the uh, De Pacindo base under artists. It's, uh, typically, that's pretty much what I use all the time. And so yeah, on this video before I edit, like you can see the bass is like dummy dummy loud. And for whatever reason, I turned it up too because I couldn't hear it on no my <laughs> my lack of speakers. But yeah.
my CPU. So this is kind of the basic map out that I did. Um, I cut a couple different things. Yeah, as you can kind of see. But I did nothing too special. Um, I have the guitar on just like those couple parts of the bars and then I do the pad. But uh, this is the full beat. Um, thank you for watching. I'm into the old.